rather than go to a hotel, if I'm going to Los Angeles, this is at the height of the pandemic in California, you put a motorhome in the studio, in the parking lot. I drive, arrive, go to the, get dropped off at the thing, give me a rental car. <clears throat> and then I go into the motorhome and from the motorhome, I go to the set when they need me because the set's been cleared of people who don't have to be there while we're rehearsing. I wear a mask and a face shield. And um, I try desperately to act under those circumstances with everybody else in the same condition. Probably mean you can never hear anybody. Mm. Anyway, once that's over, there is a man, your dresser, who comes along, as he's called, and he holds a bag out and you put the face shield and the mask in. The camera crew is already there with you because they're allowed to be there. And you shoot the scene. If there's a relight, you all gather all your stuff up and go back to the trailers with your masks and everything on until they're relit and then you can go through the whole process again. You're tested at least three times a week, or I was, and sometimes more often than that. The cost of all of that, when you consider, I don't know what they're paying, but the COVID test that they take quickly, either at Labi or, or Buckle or whatever they call it, um, costs a lot of money. I mean, it's like 120 bucks a shot. If you have 200 of a crew and half of them are being tested every day and the cast is being definitely tested, that cost comes out of your production and that production therefore has to be cut back. Um, so how are you going to cut back? And the answer is you can't. You have to do the show. You have to cut back on the number of shows. So in the old days they did 22, 24, I believe it was. And then all of a sudden it's 16 because that's all we've got enough money because all the money is going to the pandemic. It just took the guts out of doing it. I don't know how the most people feel because I was never in contact with them. The only time I ever saw anybody was on set, <laughs> all covered up. Um, there is no one there now who was there when I signed up on the dotted line. Cody's gone, Michael's gone, you know, Paulie's gone. I mean, the whole, they're all gone. Only Brian, who came in later, and um, I'm sure. Um, um. Um, but it, it's just a totally different environment now. And I'm delighted with this to be successful because the, the success is 100% due to the writers and the chief writers, to Frank and George and the people that have really run that show. And now Steve Binder. And the wonderful thing about Steve Binder, he's slightly crazy like I am. He's crazier, which is, uh, he's freer too. Was a free mind. And when he writes a script, it makes me so happy because he's so good. And the show really benefits from all the work that he's done. David McCallum, who was best known for playing Dr. Donald Ducky Mallard on the NCIS, NCIS, has died. Yeah? The famous actor from the NCIS, Donald Ducky, has passed away. He was 90 years when he died. The actor died peacefully of natural causes surrounded by his family at the New York Presbyterian Hospital on Monday. This is according to CBC News. He was the kindest, coolest, most patient and loving father. He always put family before self. He looked forward to any chance to connect with his grandchildren and had a unique bond with each of them. His son Peter McCallum shared in a statement on behalf of the family. He and his youngest grandson, White, who was nine years old, could often be found in the corner of a room of a family party having deep philosophic conversation. That's how the statement continued from the son. He was a true man. He was 
fascinated by science and culture and will turn those passions into knowledge. For example, he was capable for example, he was capable of conducting a symphony orchestra and and could actually perform an autopsy based on his deceased long studies for his role on NCIS. According to the son, the dad had mastered this role so well that he could even perform an autopsy on a real life live alone on the show. This means that he was good at what he did at NCIS and he was good at the role that he learned as Dr. Donald Ducky, which with more of his, role, his roles, including performing a huge number of autopsies from the show. After, after returning from the hospital to the apartment, I asked my mother if she was okay before she went to sleep. Her answer was simply, yes, but I do wish we had had a chance to grow all together. NCIS executive producer Steve D. Binder and David Knott also shared their memories of working with McCallum. And this is what they had to say. For over 20 years, David McCallum endured himself to audience around the world, playing the wise Quicky and sometimes ingenetic Dr. Donald Ducky Mallard. But as much as his fans may have loved him, those who worked side by side with David loved him that much more. He was a scholar and a gentleman, always gracious, consummative, professional, and never one to pass a joke. From day one, it was an honor to work with him, and he never let us down. He was quite a simple legend. He was also family and he will be deeply missed. In their own statement, the CBC News had this to write. We are deeply saddened by the passing of David McCallum and privileged that CBC was his home for so many years. David was a gifted actor and an author and beloved by many around the world. He led an incredible life and his legacy will forever live on through his family and his countless hours on film and television that will never go away. We will miss his warmth and enduring sense of humor that lift up any room of soundstage he stepped onto, as well as, his, as the brilliant stories he often shared from a life well lived. Our heart goes out to his wife Catherine and his entire family and all those who knew and loved David. A previous announcement, a previous, a previously announced NCIS 20th anniversary marathon scheduled for CBC's Monday primetime block will now feature in a memoriam card honoring McCallum. After studying at the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art and doing several years in repertory theatre in the United Kingdom, the Scotland-born actor moved into America in 1961. He landed the role of Layla Keka in The Man of Uncle Opposite Robert Vaughn. He earned two Emmy and a Golden nomination for the role. He recalled in January 2023 interview with the Emmys, and this is what he had to say. I was out of work and had bills to pay. My friend Charles Brosom knew that was the case. Why don't we have lunch in commissary at MGM and we'll see what happens? So we went. When you are a kid from Glasgow who watches movies growing up and all of a sudden you are in the cathedral with MGM commissioners with all the pictures on the wall and people walking around what, who you have seen on the screen, I was just carried away. That was this last memory that he shared from the interview that he had with Emmys. And from the Vibe City News Desk, all we have to say is rest in peace, the Power King. McCallum, you gave us so much fun from your courageous acts and your best experience and the love that you showed through NCIS. And as the role that you played as Dr. Donald was truly an amazing role. We will live to remember you and may you rest in internal peace. Make sure you like this video, comment, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. That has been all from me, your host, Alastair Mandela. I'll be seeing you on the next one.